Hello friends, welcome back to part three of my forecast review series for Q3 2022. In parts one and two, we rocketed through slides one through five of my 30 tweet Tesla forecast thread with my color commentary. And in this video, we will continue our journey together as I share my desktop and then bring up the PowerPoint deck containing all 30 slides the one we just talked about is this EBITDA uh, quarterly line chart, which uh, looks looks pretty good. Uh, we'll see how close my forecast is. The first rule of forecasting is whatever you forecast, it will be wrong. So these numbers will be wrong, but I think directionally uh, they're right. The next uh, slide in my forecast review thread was this chart showing how Tesla makes its average dollar of revenue. Now, later in this thread, we'll see a chart that I've been producing for a long time showing how much Tesla's revenue has grown over time. And you can't see that on this chart because this is a 100% indexed chart. For each quarter, we're looking at the, tra the trailing 12-month average. Easy for me to say. Uh, of the composition of revenue over that period of time. So for the average dollar of revenue, where did it come from uh, by source, ma major source of revenue for Tesla? So Tesla has a few different divisions. The primary one is automotive, which is why you see the largest bar each quarter is automotive sales excluding regulatory credits. I wanted to show regulatory credit sales separately from automotive, even though they're included in automotive revenue. Uh, the way Tesla reports it is because those have already peaked in uh, 2020 in terms of how much of Tesla's average dollar of revenue they contribute. That was as high as five cents and has since fallen even in Q1, when there was a lot of regulatory credit sales, it was only about 3% of Tesla's total revenue, uh, with still the overwhelming majority of Tesla's revenue being contributed by automotive sales. So um, uh, cash deliveries to buyers. Now, there's also an automotive leasing group. So this is just taking all those lease payments as a percent of revenue here. So that's been four cents, three cents. I think that'll wind down some as Tesla gets more cash buyers uh, as a percent of total revenue in the future. Then there's the energy segment, which I have labeled green here. So Tesla energy growing uh, over time. Now I think we're at kind of a low-ish point right now. Uh, so it used to contribute more of the total, and then Tesla had a lot of cell constraint problems where they needed to prioritize cell supply so that they could continue to produce the more profitable uh, auto revenue, uh, getting, getting more vehicles produced and more deliveries to uh, boost Tesla earnings over time because Tesla makes more money selling cars than they make selling stationary storage products. So if you have to make a decision about, hey, there aren't enough cells, what do we feed? You have to feed your uh, automotive final assembly plants and keep them running uh, to the extent that you can so that they are as profitable as possible. And if that means you're starving, uh, like mega pack projects for that time being, uh, so be it. So uh, in the future, as more cell capacity becomes available to Tesla, either through producing their own cells or by um, uh, purchasing cells from third parties to include in uh, stationary storage products, I expect Tesla energy to grow again and become a more significant portion of overall sales, but uh, nothing approaching half, at least over this time horizon. Then services and other is the bucket that holds everything else. So non-warranty repairs are in here. Uh, Tesla insurance, the um, 
the Tesla store is in here, lots of other stuff. Anything that hasn't been covered already falls into the other bucket. And then in this same video, I also want to talk about the sister chart to this one. This chart shows how Tesla spends its average dollar of revenue. So you recognize these same white bars here uh, for automotive cost of sales. So um, that's the biggest expense Tesla has is paying for the factories that produce the vehicles that are producing most of Tesla's revenue, right? That makes sense. Then there's the Tesla energy segment here. So this should uh, reduce and then grow over time is what's in my forecast. Then the same services and other segment that I described on the previous chart. Then research and development, this is a below the line expense. So there's no revenue associated with the rest of these, the R&D, the SG&A, the everything else. Um, there, these are costs of running a company. You have to spend money on research and development. You have to spend money on selling general and administrative costs. Think of these like headquarters costs for having, you know, a company that needs people who work in, you know, human resources and finance and uh, marketing and uh, lots of other areas of like a headquarters building. Then you've got the everything else, excluding stock comp. The biggest expense in here in future years is going to be taxes. <laughs> Tesla has to pay more taxes. And these green bars here are the non-GAAP earnings. And you can see I'm expecting those to grow a lot in the future. And these are bigger than they were even one forecast ago because of the 2022 Inflation Reduction Act recently passed by Congress which gives Tesla benefits that reduce their tax obligation. So these taxes going forward are going to be smaller than they would otherwise have been owing to some tax benefits Tesla will be able to take by virtue of uh, being in the business of buying and selling battery packs and stationary storage products and electric vehicles. All of those qualify for tax incentives that Tesla will be able to avail themselves of. Uh, long gone are the days when there were red bars over here on the left showing the losses uh, from Tesla's money losing uh, business back then. Tesla is well beyond the break-even point now and expect earnings to continue to grow into the future. That's all I wanted to say on this video. Uh, so uh, I will continue the series in part four, but if you've enjoyed today's video, it really helps my channel if you like and subscribe to my channel if you're not already. Uh, when you like the video, it helps other people like you find the content that I'm producing who didn't know they should have been looking for it. So uh, I will see you in the next one.